You finally finished your website with HTML, CSS and JavaScript and you want to show it to the world. But wait, there's some final steps you have to take. We will have a look at the most efficient tool for bundling your web project before deploying. When I started with simple website development, I did not know that we should minify our files or that we should use Babel to convert our JavaScript for older browsers. The simple but surprisingly complex last step of preparing your website for the wide world is a pain in the ass Trix. Today I'm going to show you the tool that I use to make this process simple and easy. Parcel.js is a web application bundler like Webpack or Gulp and the big advantage of Parcel over the others is that it's extremely easy to set up and works reliably. So let's see what Parcel is all about. We have a basic project here in our source folder, our index.html file, our logo, our CSS file and our JavaScript file. The JavaScript file appends an h3 to our DOM. So let's start with setting up Parcel. We first start with npm init to get a package.json file. We just entered through these questions for the sake of this tutorial. Now we have the package.json file. And then we install Parcel as a dev dependency. The code for that is in the description down below. And now we can see that the Parcel bundler has been installed. Now we get rid of this test script and add our own dev and build script. Our dev script is very easy, just parcel and the index.html file. And the build script exactly the same, but we just add build before our index.html file. And before we start with parcel, we just want to add our script tag to our HTML. And now we can run npm run dev to start the dev server. Now we open up localhost 123. And now we can see our website with our h2 our logo and the main added from the JavaScript file. But now we can see, of course, we have no CSS styling. We can import our CSS in two different ways, either like usually at the top in the header of our HTML file, or we can import it in our JavaScript. So for now, let's just import it in our JavaScript. And now we can see our CSS style has been added. So let's see what happens in our source code. The style sheet got added automatically even though we don't have it in our HTML. And the same for our JavaScript file, it's also hashed for the cache busting. We can also see that a disk folder has been created with our CSS and JavaScript files and the map files too. But we can see that the CSS and JavaScript file haven't been minified at this point. They're just going to be minified when we run the run build later in this video. The great thing about Parcel, it comes with a SAS compiler. So if we change our CSS file to a SAS file and we change our source here, we can see that our SAS compiler is automatically installed. Now we can see the style has been applied again. And if you go to our source code, we still can see our CSS file in the header. If you want to have a second JavaScript file, we can import it in our main.js also. So let's add another JavaScript file. And let's add a code that will append an h3. Let's save that and import it into our main JS file. And then let's call say hello down here. And we can see hello has been added to the DOM. What about if you want to add a second HTML file? We just go to the source folder and add another file. Let's say about.html. We add our code with an h2 that says about. We also bring in our logo and our script tag. So how can we access now our about page from our dev server? We have to change a little bit our script in our package.json file. So here we will just add an asterisk and here too later for the build. And if we save now, close our dev server and rerun it again. And if you reload the page, we can see it's not here, but what we have to do is change the URL to about.html. Here we can see we have our about file. Let's go to our index file. But what happened here? Our style went away. This is a little bug with parcel. And the way to fix that is if we don't import our SCSS or CSS file in our main.js file. So let's delete it up here. And we just bring it in normally here in our head of our HTML file. 
and Parcel will recognize this style sheet and will transpile it automatically to the CSS or if it's a CSS file it will minify it in the build process. So let's save that and we can see our style has been added to the index.html file. Let's also add that to our about.html file and if you go to that site we can still see our styling. So let's now build out our sites to be ready to deploy. We can see in the development phase this cache and this folder have been added. What we have to do before we run the build script, we have to delete the dist folder. Let's stop the server and run npm run build. And now we can see a dist folder has been added again with both our HTML files, our logo, our CSS, CSS map, our JavaScript and our JavaScript map files. They all have been minified and hashed for cache busting. Now we could upload this folder to a server with almost no setup in regards to parcel. So a thing to note is that JavaScript won't be transpiled to ES6 with parcel alone. You would need to install Babel and configure it the same way as using it standalone or with other bundlers. This is very easy though, I will show you how that all works in a future video about my workflow for simple web applications, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. So should you use Parcel over Webpack or Gulp? In my opinion, definitely yes. I implemented Parcel in my workflow for basic websites or web applications because of its simplicity. Should you use Parcel for bigger applications? I would say no. I've run into some issues with third-party libraries and plugins, so with a big project I would choose Webpack. But I have to say, if you have a bigger application, it would probably be wise to use a framework like React or something like Gatsby, and they come with their own workflows anyway. So really I think Parcel is a great tool and it did replace Webpack for me, as the time to set it up is way less than with Webpack or Gulp. So that's already it. I hope this video helped to bridge the gap between development environment and build environment so you can deploy your next website or web application easily. If that video helped you, consider giving it a like and if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.